<laughs> uh, all right, let's bring in our headliner now. He's Jonathan Krinsky. He's one of the guys saying that we never had the big whoosh down. He's the chief market technician at BTIG. Now I look at your notes. Welcome back. And I feel like you're kind of giving up on that. I don't, I don't think we're giving up on it. I think what we're saying is that, um, you know, you have to recognize the strength that we've had, but it's actually pretty, in our view, consistent with kind of a logical spot to stall and potentially reverse lower. Um, you know, if you look at the highs that we made in the market to the recent lows, a 61.8% retracement is right around where, where we're at right now, around 45.50 on the S&P. Um, and a lot of the issues that we saw under the surface are not really resolved, mainly uh, credit markets, credit spreads have not really confirmed the balance that we've seen. Um, if you look at under the hood, some of the some of the ratios like consumer discretionary relative to the S&P on an equal weight basis is basically churning their 52 week lows. We've seen the home builders uh, break down. And then on the flip side of the coin, what's what's been working, what's been leading? Well, you had mega cap tech, right? Apple, which is arguably defensive. Um, and then you've had stuff like utilities. Utilities are basically at a new all-time high. They're, they've been fighting off um, even with interest rates rising. And so, you know, if you look under the hood, it's a little more, more defensive. And then finally, you know, look, you, you mentioned you could argue that the resiliency in the market in the face of all of this is is constructive. But the flip side is there's a little bit of complacency moving in. If we look at put call ratios, they're basically back to the lowest that we've seen this year. And so people are now embracing more risk. They're buying more upside calls relative to puts. Um, and to us, that's just a, a poor risk reward environment right now. I mean, maybe so. But, you know, what's the unknown at this point? I, I read the list from Blank Find, which, you know, you could cite all of this and say, you see, that's why we're going right back lower. That's why you can't trust the fact that we're at the bottom rather than the glass half full and say that all of those signs are actually bullish. And we know all of the negatives. They're already in the market, right? You can either take a glass half empty view and say, well, the market's ignoring all the risk or you take the other view and say our market knows all this already and goes up in the face of it. Well, yeah, I think that's why you have to look at what what is actually happening in the market. And if you were to just look at the S&P 500, then, yeah, maybe you could say it's it's, you know, kind of looking past some of the negative news. But you have to dig a little deeper and and realize why is the S&P doing what it's doing? And it's because what we mentioned, I mean, Apple was up nine straight days. That's the biggest stock in the market. Tesla, which is the fourth biggest stock in the Nasdaq, is up about 50 percent over the last 10 trading days. And so, you know, you have this big mega cap names. Certainly that's moving the cap weighted indices up. Um, but again, if you Seen look at credit, before. look at internals, it's just not really consistent with what you'd see um, in a major new leg higher in risk. I know